Hey everybody, welcome to Lessons with Troy. I'm Troy Brinney Meyer. Well, this lesson is going to be a lap steel lesson, but it's tailored specifically to the Duesenberg lap steel with the multi benders. So I'll be going over some charts that I made that shows you how I think about the chords and how to kind of simplify it to where you can start using it on gigs and and uh, you know if you're wanting to get more of that pedal steel sound, um, you know, using these benders. So we are in open D tuning, so D A D. F sharp, A, D. And as far as my tone, um, I'm using my Kemper amp profiler, and I do have some de uh, delay and, and reverb in. And also, I kind of have the gain crank just a little bit so that it breaks up if I hit it hard, but if I hit it soft. Then it's real clean, but... But if I hit it harder, then then you know it breaks up. And I'm using the uh, Michael Britt um, Kemper profiles, and this is a '67 Fender Deluxe. It's my favorite one right now, as far as the one that I use a lot. I love it because it just it, it can either clean up or 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 get overdriven depending on how hard you hit it. And what I'm doing is I found that it sounds kind of cool to, uh, I, I'm using this neck pick up here, but if you want to get it a little bit brighter, crisper, you know, you could use your, your, the bridge pick up. And okay, so the first thing you want to do, let me put this on tuner, is you want to tune up your lap steel to open detuning. And if you haven't yet, you're going to want to use an Allen wrench and tune your, your benders as well. So what you do is you say on this third string, let's say, that's an F sharp, right? And I do temper that a little bit. Meaning just lower it just a little bit so that it blends with the uh, with the other notes of that D chord. Okay, and then if you want to tune your bender, which this this bender here. To, it's going to bend that, that third string up a half step. So I'm a little bit flat. So what I would do is I'd take my, my Allen wrench and I would just loosen this just a little bit so it can bend a little bit further down. It's a little bit much. So I did that with both benders. So this this bender here is on my third string, and that's taking that F sharp, and that's bending that up to a G, right, half step. And then this 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 bender here is uh, taking that second string, and we're going from an A to a B note. Okay, now, as far as the placement of these, the way that I like it, if my hand's right here, I like to have this bender, the one that's on the third string, I like to have it hit this little, kind of that part of my hand, um, this, this part right here, that bone, just a little bit in front of that bone. And then this bender on, that works the second string, I like to have it hit right about there on my hand. So that all I have to do is, so if I want to have that, that third string, I just kind of bend my wrist like that. But if I want that second string, I can just bend my wrist like that and just push down with that part of it. And so it'll take you some time to kind of get the timing of those bends happening to where it's, it's kind of like a pedal steel, you know, you could take some time to get your feet to um, properly bend those in time to where it doesn't, it's, you're not bending them too quick. You, you just want, and, and you're not bending, bending and stopping. You want it to be just a nice smooth bend. Okay, so once you get those those benders in tune, you know, to where it's your your lap steel's in tune, the benders are in tune. Now let's start talking about some of these chords. Okay, the first thing, the biggest thing that I that I could impart to you as far as my, what I've learned with this is 
don't think about bending both of them at the same time right now. I would say that's kind of an advanced technique that will come later because you'll find that it's hard to bend them both at the same time. But if you think about just bending them one at a time and getting licks using that, I feel like it'll really open up a lot of uh, a lot about this instrument. And that's what I'm doing right now. I, I do have a volume pedal. You know, just a good Rick vo volume pedal. And that's plugged into uh, my Sarno uh, steel guitar black box so that kind of brings the, the um, any tone that, that, that good Rick, it's a passive volume pedal. So it kind of sucks the tone out if you don't use one of those, uh, like a black, you know, Brad Sarno uh, black box or something like that that can kind of, um, you know, change the impedance of your pickup to kind of bring that tone back. So that's what I'm using with that volume, and that, that really helps a lot, I find, to just kind of bring back any volume that, that I'm, or not volume, but tone that I might be missing um, using that pedal, that volume pedal. So anyways, so, so say we're in the key of G, right? Although we're in open D tuning, we're in the key of G. We're, our G chord's here on our fifth fret. That'll be our one chord, right? Your four chord is going to be C here on your 10th fret. And your five chord D will be here on your 12th fret. Okay, now let's just, let's look at that chart um, that has, where we're just talking about your first string and second string. Because there's a ton of cool stuff you can do just thinking about that first string and second string. Okay, first of all, what we can do is if we want Let's say our one chord there, G, where that's the fifth of the chord and the root of the chord. If we push our second string bender down, that's going to give us a C chord. That's going to give us our four chord. So just like kind of on pedal steel where you got your one, four, and then you go up two frets for that D chord for your five chord. That's really cool. That's that's that opens up your your a lot of a lot of ideas there too. So if you've got one here, there's a G chord here, and then you've got your four chord is right there, right right underneath it, but with your your second string bender down. Well, when you go up to your 12th fret, that's a D chord, right? So the four chord of D, and this might be confusing, but the four chord of D is a G chord. So we've got a G chord here. And then if you push your bender down, second string bender down, then you've got G chord up here in your 12th fret. So G, G. And then you go up an octave all the way up here to your, I guess that'd be 17th fret, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So you've got a G chord way up here on 17. So G, no bender, G, second string bender, and then fifth fret G, no bender. So you end up getting cool licks, you know, going just using that second string bender. You know, and just doing the different inversions, let's say of that G chord, of whatever chord you want, knowing there's a G, and then knowing where you can get that same G with your bender down. And all you got to do is think, okay, whatever the, like that's G, whatever whatever you do with, with that bender, when you push that down, that's going to give you the four chord of the key of, of what, what fret you're on. So that's G, so there's C, right? If this is A, then that's D. If this is D, that's G, if that makes any sense to you. Okay, now the other thing that's that's pretty cool is minor chords with this. So we're just, we're just, we're keeping it real simple, right? Just this one bender and just two strings. So if you have a G chord here, right, fifth fret, first string, second string, if you push your bender down and move up three frets, that gives you a G minor. Right, because this is root, there's your flat third, 
If you push the bender down, that brings the fifth of the chord to the sixth of the chord. There's flat seven, major seven, root. So you get a root and a flat third, and that's on my diagram there too. Now the other thing is if you go back two frets and push your, your bender down on your second string bender, you've got, that brings it, uh, gives you a really nice G7 chord. You kind of can hear that going, you know, there's G. Because what that does then is when you push the bender down and you're on your third fret, you know, back or back two frets from whatever chord you're on there, that gives you with the bender down the fifth of your chord, and then the flat seven of your chord, and you can see that in that diagram as well. Okay, so let's just review here because that's it's pretty powerful stuff if you know how to use it. G chord, C chord, D chord, and then G chord take your bender off, C, D. So we kind of got two different positions here, right? If, if we're in this root position, your one chord is no bender, four chord is bender on the same fret, go up two frets, there's your five chord. The D, the D note, right? Well, if you go to your 12th fret, that's a D, push your bender down, there's a G. And of course, on your 10th fret is C. C, D, G, and then go all the way up to 17, and you've just got that real high octave, you know, up an octave from your fifth fret. And all I'm doing there is just using that that one bender and two strings, right? And that's and once you start using your volume pedal with that, and what I like to do is just really I'm kind of using it too much, but barely bring it off. And when I push the bender down, I kind of do my volume pedal uh, going along with it. And then it kind of gives you a, some nice, cool volume swells. Okay, so talking about minor chords now, um, the other thing, um, pushing this, this one bender down and on two strings, it does give you, in this position, fifth fret over this G chord, does give you your four and your five, right? But it also gives you an E minor chord gives you what's called your six, your minor six chord in the key of G or, you know, and all this is movable too. So just mem start memorizing these shapes, right? Got your G chord here, push it down, go back two frets. That's your G7 or you're, you're making your one chord a seven chord. Go up, have the bend down, go up three frets. There's your minor chord. Push it down. That's your four chord right under your one chord. It's also your six, your minor six chord. And this is all in, on those diagrams that I made too. Now that being said, if there's your six chord, the other two minor chords in a key is your two chord and your three chord, right? A minor and B minor in the key of G. So over this C chord on your 10th fret, right? If you push your bender down, that gives you an A minor chord. That can work as an A minor. Go up two frets and there's your B minor. So it's a lot of thinking, but thinking in numbers in the Nashville number system and understanding this really helps. Because if we've got a C chord here on our 10th fret, let's say we're in the key of C. What's the 6 chord of the key of C? The minor 6 is an A minor. So that's right under your whatever chord you're on, pushing that bar down, either gives you your 4 chord on these two strings or your 6 chord, depending on how you, how you want to use it and how you think about it. And I've got that in that diagram too, where you know you push this bar down or your, your bender down on your second string. That either gives you on your second string the third of, of a let's say 
C chord would be your four chord in this position. And then the fifth of that chord, third, major third and fifth. Or you can think of it, that's the notes E and G, right? Well, E and G is also the root of an E minor chord and the flat third of an E minor chord. It's a lot to keep in mind, but just keep in mind one, four, five, or one, six, bend her down, two, right underneath your four chord, underneath your five chord bender down, there's three, minor two chord, minor three chord. So you just kind of gotta gotta memorize that. You know, know where your your inversions are. G, 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 C, C, C. Then D, D, D. Or E minor. And it's weird. It's it sounds exactly the same. But if you play it, you know, while the band's playing an E minor chord, it'll totally fit because those notes, you know, they share the same notes. Remember, E and G, that can work over a C chord or an E minor chord. Right here on your fifth fret. Okay, so if we go to the chart now where we're thinking three strings at a time, let's go ahead and pull that up and we'll start talking about that. Strings three, two, one. I mean, 